Atheist Nomads episode 428, Religion in Africa. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin and joining me is Lauren. Hello. And the title is, you know, Dustin off the degree and one of the news stories and feedback that we got. So, <laughs> all related to that. Excellent. Uh... Now, I just had a coffee with booze in it, so I'm going to try my best to not refer to Africa as a country, at least, you know, <laughs> during this episode. Yep. And, uh, all right, we're going to start off with a couple of couple of things. So, first off, the sale <gasps> at the, on the store is in progress. T-shirts. So, it goes until the 17th. All right. And. So, that's like. You can get a shirt Three for days? 13 bucks. Nice. Nice. Everything else is normal price, but if if you've been holding off on getting a shirt and stickers and coffee mug, yeah, you can save $8. That's pretty good. So go for it. Yeah. Atheistnomads.com slash store. Get some for your, get, get one for your mom, <laughs> your dad, and your dog, and your kid. <laughs> and... Also, uh, yeah, some of you have probably noticed uh, recent episodes downloading again in your podcast player. Nobody's uh, nobody's noticed, Dustin. Nobody <laughs> nobody cares. I uh, went ahead and I've made made the move on the hosting changes. So feeling pretty good about it. Made some good progress, and we'll go into more details at the end after it's all done. For since probably Aaron from Interesting If True would be the only person actually interested in that. <laughs> if it's true. <laughs> So, yeah, Aaron, hang on till the end. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, feeling pretty good about all that and been having fun. So, all right, let's get into dusting off the degree. Okay. Which, if we want to talk about, when you're talking about Africa, it's always a complicated topic because of, you know, humanity started there. Yeah. So there have been humans on Africa as long as there have been humans. Yeah. And you add to it that it is the second largest continent on Earth. Like, we're talking, you know, roughly half the size of Asia, but it's still bigger than North America or South America, way bigger than Europe, definitely a whole lot bigger than Australia, and has a giant ocean of sand covering a large portion of it. Yeah. So, in a lot of ancient history, the easy way of looking at Africa would be Northern Africa was part of the Mediterranean world, and everything below the Sahara Desert was its own thing. So you had, throughout ancient history, the development of what Well, the Eurocentric ancient history. (laughs) Um, By ancient history, I mean once writing was a thing. Okay. Uh, You had... Then there's also the whole issue of the crazy imperial civilizations all starting in places like Egypt and the Middle East, India and China and Southern Europe getting writing and stuff a lot sooner than most of Africa had it. So there's a lot of history that isn't known. Ah, yeah. Uh, Because you don't really have history until there's somebody actually writing it down. Right. Uh, What we do know, though, is basically standard human religion has been what's called paganism which was you have your family gods and your local gods and your regional gods and you do some kinds of sacrifices to appease them and try to get their their favor that's basically the basis for all human religion so a lot of groveling yeah basically you know a fertility god and a god of war and usually a fertility goddess and a god of war and usually one over the weather and yeah then you add on to that more and more and more. And so, yeah, you, you would have, you definitely have some of that. In the book of Jeremiah, in the Old Testament, there is talk about a exile community in Africa. Um, based on the description, we're talking probably southern Egypt or modern Sudan. There are people who have immigrated from Ethiopia to Israel and have by genetic testing, proven they are Jewish. Yeah. So there is definitely evidence that some form of Judaism, some group of Jews, brought Judaism into Africa outside of just the Mediterranean region at some point in ancient history. 
Now, as far as the timing on that, that could have been back then. It could have just been during the Jewish-Roman Wars when the Jews were kicked out of, out of the Middle East, <laughs> <laughs> out of Judea. Uh, when that happened, they all scattered. Some ended up in, in modern-day Ukraine. They were all over the Mediterranean, uh, all across the Middle East. And yeah, it makes sense some would travel down the Nile more into the interior of Africa. Then you have the early Christian church. It was mostly wherever the Romans were. There is a story in Acts about the deacon Philip meeting on the road a Ethiopian eunuch who was servant of the queen of Ethiopia and converted him. And there's tradition that that eunuch then went back to Ethiopia and converted the court, and that's why Ethiopia is Christian. Okay. We do know that Ethiopia has been Christian for longer than Rome. Hell a long time. Yeah. Uh, so in the early Christian days, Christianity made it into Ethiopia. And also, with the Roman Empire controlling the northern coast of Africa, they also made it all the way across northern Africa. But there was the Sahara Desert in the way. Right. South of Ethiopia and south of the the Sahara at that point, religion in Africa would have still been traditional paganism. Then Muhammad and Islam happened. Within a few decades, the Islamic Caliphate conquered all of northern Africa. Okay, took care of that, huh? And also most of the Iberian Peninsula, modern day Spain and Portugal. Uh, They, most of the Christians in those areas, converted to Islam. Some of the Jews did as well, but a lot of them continued to be Jewish until, and in their family stayed in those areas until way more recently. Then the Islamic expansion started into Africa and it happened in several different ways. There was adventurers heading down into Sudan. There was merchants traveling down the Indian Ocean coast. I, I just love that there's a whole segment of the human population designated as adventurers. <laughs> <laughs> By adventurers, uh, a better way of putting it would be is uh, Islamic men who traveled to Sudan to, while single, not bringing families along, while single, to try to start a better life than they could have elsewhere. And then they started dominating everything and marrying all the women and... Oh, okay. So not like Livingston or something. Not No, no. Not our tra- traditional Western idea of what an adventurer is. Where... No, no, no. Okay. No. Uh, so then, uh, and then there was, there was also some, uh, there was spread of, of Islam uh, through the, the Sahara Desert into um, the Sahel region, um, which is that the grasslands between the Sahara and the uh, jungles of Central Africa. And that continued to result in gradual spread of Islam further and further south, um, primarily on the western side of Africa, while the Islamic traders coming down the coast and setting up trading ports converted people to Islam, and that crept in from the east. Southern Africa, the interior of Africa at that point, would have all still just been your standard traditional pagan and at this point we're talking (laughs) but closing in fast we're getting we're getting up to about 1500 the year about the year 1500 which is when portugal started doing trading posts in africa and some dutch people colonized south africa and christianity became more of a thing on the western coast and in southern africa Okay. So Christianity started to spread. Man, Portugal really got around. <laughs> uh, the, the, the deal that Spain and Portugal made with the Pope gave Portugal all of Africa and all of Asia. And Spain was supposed to get all of the New World, but they didn't know Brazil was there yet. And so when some Portuguese sailors got blown off course traveling around Western Africa, they ended up in Brazil. Okay. And we're like, hey, this is ours. That's really far off. Not as far as you'd think. Huh. I, I mean, it just it always surprises me. Uh, a ship could be blown off course and they survived long enough to land on a completely different continent like that. 
if it's a ship that's set up for an oceanic, I, it just I know. Yeah, blows my mind. Uh, uh, religion was actually a important factor in the slave trade because, for the most part, it was uh, Muslims capturing pagans to sell them to Christians. Yeah, which is really ugly. <laughs> Um, so Portugal didn't actually do any major colonizing at that point. Uh, by the time you get to the 1870s, 80s, and 90s, you get the scramble for Africa where the European powers carved up and colonized all of Africa, which of course put in charge a Christian elite, which meant the local elite had a tendency to convert to Christianity to gain favor with the European rulers. Right which helped spread Christianity. And then in the post-colonial era, so 1960s on, you had nativist movements that took advantage of liberation theology and then Pentecostals and Protestants swooping in and doing a lot of evangelism and missionary work and converting lots and lots and lots of people. Uh, so that's kind of the high-level view. Okay. Uh, the ancient side of things with Christianity and Judaism in North Africa, that's your basic Roman world. Uh, the Islamic expansion into Africa, that was pretty typical for what was happening outside of, of, actually it was even happening in Europe during the Middle Ages. That was the Middle Ages. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then colonialism and yeah, post. It's been ugly for a long time. It has. Yeah. Um, so we'll be going in depth into a number of topics relevant to this um, to get into the spread of predominantly Protestant Christianity in Africa, uh, the theological movements that have been fueling that, namely liberation and liberation theology and prosperity gospel, which are very different and very similar. Oh, yeah, one of those, huh? Yeah. And so that's going to be a, a lot of fun and is uh, thanks to the feedback we'll be reading later from Keith. If you want to leave us feedback, you can send us a message at feedback at atheistnomads.com. Use the contact form on the website, speak pipe button, leave us audio feedback, um, or contact us basically anywhere else except for Facebook. Yeah, we ignore the crap out of that. We probably shouldn't, but we do. Yeah. And if you want to support the show, you can find out how at atheistnomads.com slash donate. All right. In the news, we're going to start in Africa. In 2017, 18, 19, the country of Ghana was going through some positive reforms, including developing a comprehensive sex ed curriculum so more advanced than the uh united states definitely well better than you'd find in many states yes uh which which is something that is absolutely critical in many parts of africa where hiv is running rampant and where misinformation is prompting greater spread of hiv Ugh, yeah uh the the particular common relatively common belief is that if you have HIV and you rape a virgin, you'll be cured of your HIV. Wow, that's messed up. Yeah. Whoever started that rumor is, uh, that's, that sounds like a, a joke, a bad joke gone awry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So, fixing stuff like that, there's definitely good reason for instituting good comprehensive sex ed. Um, Western Africa also has really high birth rates and... Um, high population density that is, in some cases, approaching dangerous. I don't know. Whenever I see pictures, it always looks kind of dystopian to me. But, um, you know, there's plenty of people who live there that are, that are, that are pretty happy with it. Yeah, but... <laughs> it's just, whoa, that's a lot of people crammed into a small area. Right. And, and when, you, when you... Several countries in, in Western Africa have average ages in the teens where... That's a lot of bibbis. A lot. So comprehensive sex ed. Help with HIV. Maybe help lower birth rates. Should be great. Well, instead, the World Congress of Families decided to host a conference in 
Accra, Ghana. The World Conference of Families is the same group that was behind California's Proposition 8. Oh boy. This is a coalition of right-wing conservative American Christians and Russia. They take the fun out of fundies. Partnering with Russia. Yeah, well, you know, whatever you can do to further your own agenda. The common ground they found is anti-gay agenda. So they held a conference in Ghana uh, opposing comprehensive sex ed or any sex ed and promoting the prohibition of homosexuality. Yeah, that's been going over real well. So that law is that they were pr proposing is being debated in Ghana's parliament and people are being emboldened by that law. Yeah, that's always the statement that leads to like bad news. Mm -hmm. So in this article, um, it is a very long article. It is a very good read. They go into stories of gay Ghanans having to go into hiding, um, where it started with some bullying, like relatively minor name calling, but over the years has turned more and more violent to the point of life threatening. They have safe houses. It's gotten bad enough that they have to have safe houses for gay Ghanans. Wow. And all this in two years, three years? Yep. It had been getting better until a group of Americans and Russians came and stirred up the hate. Way to export that. Yep. Um, if it passes, it will be probably the most, uh, the, it'll, it'll probably be the harshest anti-LGBTQ law in Africa. That sucks. That really sucks. I hope it doesn't pass, but... Yeah. Ugh. But even if it doesn't, um, the harassment and assault the public humiliating on camera to then share with everyone in the community that will all continue that sucks and for our next story we have a crazy christian nationalist right-wing lieutenant governor who's not from idaho oh yeah yeah this one is mark robinson from north carolina uh. he spoke at ashbury baptist church in seagrove north carolina talking about Christians needing to take control of public schools because children are being abused by being taught filth. Ah, the big old quote-unquote filth. Yes. And I agree. I mean, there is a lot of filth in public schools. It's disgusting what is being taught. Mostly I'm referring to inaccurate history mm -hmm. or um, <laughs> stifling, uh, you know, uncreative bullshit standardized testing no instead the filth he's talking about is well to, to quote him there's no reason anybody anywhere in america should be telling any child about transgenderism homosexuality any of that filth end quote okay except you know it's human nature but whatever uh -huh. yeah uh so let's just leave it up to the parents <laughs> uh so he made those statements in june at the asbury baptist church uh, then in August, he spoke at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ in Raleigh, where he continued down the anti-trans, with anti-trans rhetoric, um, and he's actually getting some pushback now. Oh, that's promising. Yeah. Uh, of course, the pushback wasn't until he started calling the transgender, right move, transgender rights movement Demonic and full of the Antichrist spirit. Well, you know, any any improvement is good improvement. I... <laughs> uh, in some no-duh news, a survey from the Public Religion Research Institute has found incredible overlap between Christian nationalists and people who believe in the Great Replacement conspiracy theory. What the heck is that? That is the belief that for, from the question uh, that they were asked, quote, God intended America to be a new promised land where European Christians could create a society that could be an example for the rest of the world, end quote. Oh. So there's the Christian nation city on a hill, and they believe that brown people are coming up across the border to commit genocide against the white people and replace them. 
Oh, kind of like what we did to the brown people that were here before? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. These were all the ones that were screaming, Happy Columbus Day! On Monday. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, sorry, in case you haven't noticed, everybody else is celebrating Indigenous uh, People's Day, so fuck you, buddy. Now, surprisingly, they found white evangelical Protestants were the only religious group to mostly agree with the God intended America to be a new promised land statement with a slim majority at 52%. Okay. They were followed up by Hispanic Protestants at 46%. Hispanic Protestants believed in the Great Replacement theory? Believing the city on the hill. America is the promised oh. land for oh, European okay. Christians. Okay, okay. Uh, but they're not European? Hispanics are... Are they... That's confusing. I know they always ask, are you Hispanic or Latino? But um, Most Hispanics have some European ancestry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, many have they a lot of European realize ancestry. realize that everybody else thinks that they're the bad guys, though, right? You would think. <laughs> uh, other non-white Protestants, 38% of them believe that. White Catholics came in at 37%. Hispanic Catholics came in at 35%, white mainline Protestants at 34%, more than a quarter of Jews agreed with the statement. Okay. Um, oh, black Protestants specifically were also more than a quarter at 26%. Other non-Christian religious people, 15% of them believe it. And even among the religiously unaffiliated, 11% wow. believe that America is is God's promised land for white Christians. Well, that explains a lot. A quarter of Jews, a quarter of black Protestants, and 11% of the unaffiliated. Now, the unaffiliated doesn't mean atheists. No, it's just unaffiliated. But, (laughs) yeah, it explains a lot for something that I've never even heard of. Yeah, Uh, they found the the highest predictor of if somebody believes that is whether or not they trust far-right TV news with 67%. Right, because they say it all the time. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, it's in the byline. America, God's given land or something. (laughs) And the second highest group were QAnon believers at 65%. QAnon is just, that's just weird. I I still can't, I refuse to wrap my head around it. I'm surprised QAnon wasn't higher. Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is... Everybody loves that feeling of privilege you get when you think that this country is given to you. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the super Christian version of Manifest Destiny. Yeah, and it's messed up. Yeah. And very damaging. (laughs) Manifest Destiny was just racist. This is racist and religious. Yeah. Hostile, hostily religious. Tony Spell who's the right-wing pastor of Louis, that Louisiana's Life Tabernacle Church, had a chat with Alex Jones about COVID vaccines. God, I'm surprised anybody's talking to him. I'm surprised anybody would talk to either of them. <laughs> I mean, fair. <laughs> so who better to talk to each other? Right. So Spell said, Quote, they're going to have the answer for all the chaos and turmoil and the weather problems that are actually being controlled right now. Oh, barf. Then Jones said, I was about to say that they have a huge secret government weather control program at the UN that they admit exists. They're orchestrating the global depopulation collapse, and they're going to blame it on, again, the general public. Why does Satan want depopulation? Spell. He wants depopulation because he wants revenge against the human race because we took his place. God made man is in his image and after his likeness. The shot, referring to COVID, actually affects your DNA. It actually changes the molecular structure of humans who are created in God's image and after his likeness. That's why the government is wanting to push this vaccine so heavily. Wow. Oh, these poor people. It's just lunatic. So, first off... Weather machine. You no, know, I'm going to start. I'm oh, going to go okay. backwards. Start okay. from the back. Uh, mRNA vaccines contain messenger RNA that does not reprogram the DNA of cells. Right. It, it does not change your, it doesn't change your molecular structure. Nope. It does not change you from 100% human DNA to somehow 99% human DNA. 
It doesn't do that. What they do is put co- uh, the, the messenger RNA into your body so that your cells pick up on that and generate spike proteins. It's just coding for the, the mechanics in the cells. It's not actually affecting the nuclear DNA at all. Or the mitochondrial DNA either. Right. So yeah, that's, that's not what these vaccines do. Yeah. They do not affect your DNA. Uh, huge secret government weather control program at the UN. Yeah. I've heard of, I've heard something along these lines. It's, it's the, it's the same program that suggests shooting, um, particulates into the air to promote snow or, to, or to lower the temperature. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do not control hurricanes with a gyroscope or something. I mean, this, they're not causing natural disasters, which is what the conspiracy is. Right. Yeah. But the, there is like a group of scientists and people whose job it is to look for solutions to these bigger mm-hmm. problems, but they're not controlling the weather. And, and the extent like to... Kind of, Batman supervillain. Yeah, like the extent to how we can control the weather is like what they did in China before the Beijing Olympics. That's it. They I mean, seeded clouds to cause it to rain to knock the pollution out of the air. Yeah, that's about it. Heck, we got snow making machines up at Bogus Basin. <laughs> or, or it's not a big conspiracy. No. Thing. I can't now. I can't go through and say there's no such thing that there is no weather control that's just all bullshit because i mean i get it i I get where the theory where the conspiracy started but yeah but it's controlling hurricanes not controlling flash flooding not controlling well well but there is there is no big global weather control program no there's not like satellites or like directing wind or something there is a lot of research going into how to control weather to weaken hurricanes and cool the earth. That's what NASA's been doing for 50 years. We're going to need some stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> you think? If we want to avoid global depopulation, we do need a global program trying to control the weather. Yeah. Because <laughs> if we don't, oh boy. The, the, let's hope the pessimistic uh, models aren't right. Just trying to undo the damage we've done. At this point, we just need to slow down the damage yeah, that's happening. That's, that's true. We need to stop making it worse. We're still making it worse. And now, one thing that is also funny in here, kind of coded in here, is uh, Alex Jones with secret government, UN, and Satan. Oh, yeah. Oh, the holy trifecta. The unholy trifecta. He's talking about the globalists. Yeah. Who are working for Satan. Oh, my God. That's the Jews. Oh, my God. It's always the Jews. In case you haven't noticed, it's always the Jews. It's like it's never lupus. <laughs> it's always the Jews. Yeah. Some people, that's just that's just how they think now. And it's sad. Yeah. Alex Jones. Um, oh, poor guy. He's just lost it. He has totally lost it. He started to believe in his own crap. <laughs> When you start believing your own shit, your own entertainment. Well, unless or, unless you believe what he told the court in his custody hearing. That it was all for entertainment. That it's all an act. It was. Apparently it's not anymore. Either that or he's still trying to hold on to that last string of a couple thousand dollars he can get. Uh, doing appearances. Doing, talking to people. Those gifts that he can get from people who pity him. Because <laughs> that's all this really is. All right. And now we're going to talk about... And now, moving on to my hometown, Grants Pass, Oregon, county seat of Josephine County. Oh, goody. Where the county commissioners were having a meeting. And, oh, for for a little bit of of background here, uh, Josephine County didn't really have any big COVID waves until this summer. Like, they had really missed it. They were... That's because nobody goes there. Rural enough, Oregon's mitigation efforts were effective enough, you know, you shut down tourism in an area where tourism for rafting and whatnot is going to be your biggest uh, cause of spread. Well, then you're not going to have spread. Yeah, all you got is the hem- marijuanas. Mm-hmm. So at this point, they still only have 53% of adults vaccinated against COVID. Yikes. Uh, fortunately, I can say out of my relatives who live in Josephine County, um, 
all but one are vaccinated. That's pretty good. Well, one had to catch it first. Yeah. But she caught it two days before she was going to get vaccinated. Okay, that's, okay, that's true. That's, that's not she fair. She was on her. She waited a long oh, time. Oh, she did. Come on. She was asking for it. Yeah. It's a uh, terrible thing to say, and I immediately <laughs> feel terrible for saying it, but she was totally asking for it. Uh, they've also had, um, like everywhere else, uh, hospitals overwhelmed, completely overrun, collapse of healthcare um, for quite a while recently. And so at this, this uh, county commissioner's meeting, which was virtual, Commissioner Darren Fowler actually said, quote, We are all placing faith in someone because we are not, as far as I know, the people on this call are not virologists. So we're putting our faith in someone. You cannot set aside the right of liberty and freedom for the sake of a mandate. People still in America have the freedom to choose, and I am shocked that people are willing to give up, give that up for the good of society. Sounds very communist, very socialist. Yeah. That's not what America is about. Oh, boy. This virus has become completely political. It's only got a few uh, things left in the medical field, and I'm not sure I want to tell people to talk to their doctor about whether to take the vaccine or not anymore because they're threatening doctors' licenses and livelihoods. So I'm not sure if I w want you even asking your doctor. You're just going to have to ask God and pray for wisdom on this one because you can't trust the politicians, you can't trust the doctors, you certainly can't trust the CDC or World Health Organization. Ouch. He then went on. Sounds like you should be talking to Alex Jones. Quote, I'm also very disappointed in our governor's office who is willing to kick all of our heroes out of the hospital after talking so nicely about them for the last 18 months, but willing to kick them out. Oh, about the employees that aren't going to get vaccinated. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I can only think that it's because you're down to the Republicans. And if you could purge all of our systems of Republicans, get them to leave the state, then I bet you would. End quote. Oh. That has certainly convinced me to move there even more. No, that's not fair. But um, yeah, that's that's. To be fair, commissioners are garbage. Mm -hmm. They're garbage people who do garbage jobs. It's mid-level bureaucrats that need to be there. But I mean, my sister works for them, and it's just it's just garbage, steaming piles of it. People who think that be, they've gotten a commission, you know, that because they are commissioners, that somehow they're on the same level as like high-end government officials and they're not they're local <laughs> politics and in Josephine county the it's a failed county yeah uh the police department and the, the county sheriff's department has basically only been running the jail <laughs> it's because all of the marijuanas no it's because they they aren't willing to tax people right it's the Republicans feel like it's the it's utopia and they've only lucked out because of the climate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, people have freedom to choose. Um, that has been an, an important thing. It has been longstanding tradition in the United States that you can choose to not be a part of society if you're willing to threaten public health. Right. There is. I mean, you have the cho you have choice, but not in the face of the greater good. Yeah. And the greater good is pretty loose. Yeah, that's a pretty subjective thing to think about. But when it comes to a virus, I mean, come on, they could have wiped this thing out. Then people chose not to. Uh -huh. and so now we're going to have to live with it. And using vaccines to stop uh, horrible, horrible outbreaks and pandemics is something the U.S. has historically used force to vaccinate people for. Yeah, it's not like this is the first time this has happened. People were jailed over smallpox, refusing smallpox vaccines. And, pe and then the guys come along and say, that's not the American way. It's like, that's exactly the American way. Where have you, where did you grow up? Uh, like, our parents got lined up in school to all get shots. There wasn't any parental consent on that. No. You line up all the kids and inoculate them. And it worked. It worked. Public health has never been a thing about choice because it's public health. Personal health, you have lots of choices. Public health is different. When you are a healthcare professional, then it's absolutely different. Ooh. Because then not only are you putting your community at risk, you're putting the vulnerable, most vulnerable people in your community at risk. Well, you know, 2020, 2021 has been the years of fuck the public. Mm-hmm. 
And if your opinion is fuck the public, then fuck you. You shouldn't be a nurse. <laughs> You're in the wrong line of work. You're in the wrong line of work. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the big one. It's just like, what the hell are you doing here then? Yeah. You, Go be a nail technician or something. Uh, man. Uh, now, part of the, the mandate that uh, the commissioner was referring to is it has been Oregon state law since 1989 that anyone can opt out of any mandatory vaccination program. In other words, no vaccination is mandatory in Oregon. They have, as part of the police powers of the governor to deal with a public health emergency, overridden that for this one shot and are not allowing personal exemptions medical and religious only yeah don't even get me started on religious <laughs> which is our next story yeah. <laughs> u.s district judge david hurd in albany new york ruled against the state of new york's workplace vaccination requirement for healthcare workers ruling that they are violating First Amendment religious liberties by not allowing religious exemptions. Okay. This, again, this just gets me going. It's like, okay, a religious exemption. What constitutes a religious exemption that actually makes sense? That isn't just, I don't want to. Um, I mean, coming from the perspective of an atheist, there is none because it's all bullshit. But from other, like, from an actual religious perspective, what? The, the, the general... The general take, what is the exemption here? I would take on that would be you need to be your beliefs need to be serious and internally consistent. Christian Science and other faith healing groups that refuse all health care, I'll give them that because that's consistent. Th that's consistent on a religious exemption, and in the case of the pandemic, uh, they're not going to be taking up hospital beds anyway. No, they're going to be dying in their homes. They're also not going to be working as in healthcare. <laughs> no, not not particularly. Uh, if you believe that disease is an illusion of the mind, you are not likely to be working in. You are very unlikely to be working in healthcare. Oh, uh, you know, not legitimate healthcare anyway. <laughs> Maybe some chiropractors out there. As far as like actual religious beliefs, like Catholics could have some grounds on the the fetal cell line testing but the p pope has pulled the rug out from under that so there's there aren't really any viable religious exemptions okay so i would side with the judge on this one say okay yeah you can have religious exemptions bring us one that makes sense that's the only that's the only caveat that i would add to that it's like okay bring us one that makes sense and we'll let you ex and we'll exempt you but mm -hmm. so far that's all this whitewashed the ambi pamby, I just don't want a tantrum throwing that you find in, you know, middle aged suburbia. Mm -hmm. Karens. Yeah. Yeah. Karens and Chads. It's just, yeah. Religious exemption shouldn't just be a piece of paper that you write, that you just sign. No, it needs to be serious. Yeah. It's not something that should be thrown around, it's something that should be taken very, very serious. The European Court of Human Rights ruled on Tuesday that people cannot sue the Vatican in European courts. Okay. You're going to have to explain this a little bit. All right, so... That goes over my head on multiple levels. A group of 24 Belgian, French, and Dutch sir, people who were raped by priests as children... Okay. Attempted to sue in Belgian courts in 2011. The courts in Belgium ruled that they had no jurisdiction over the Vatican. So they appealed and appealed and appealed. And they have now made it to the European Court of Human Rights, which should be looking out for, you know, human rights, as in the rights of victims of massive church conspiracies yeah yeah instead the european court of human rights ruled that the vatican city is a sovereign state and thus not under the jurisdiction of any european courts so you can't sue the vatican in any of your courts so you can't okay so you're screwed 
You can't, well, at least you can't sue. They were trying to go the tactic of sue the Vatican, not the local diocese. Okay. Because it's a global, it's a, it's a global, global conspiracy and network of pedophiles. It's the stuff that the satanic panic and QAnon and everything keeps claiming is out there. It exists. It's called the Catholic Church. Ugh. It is a global cabal of pedophiles. So you can't sue in your local courts. You can't sue in the European courts. I think a better ruling they could have made is that the treaty between the Pope and Mussolini isn't valid, and the Vatican City is just a neighborhood in Rome, and thus under the jurisdiction of Europe. It's in Italy. That it's not. It's That's a insane. religious organization. It's not an independent country. Yeah. Like, yeah. Good luck on that one. That's what the ruling should have been. <laughs> Cute. <sighs> oh yeah and they started in a belgian court because they had to start in a low court right I mean, that's how you get up to the higher courts is you appeal and it was specifically a group from multiple countries together in a class action lawsuit against the multinational organization it points out to the u.n it points out the issue with how, say, for example, that group of people could sue Google. Google is not a European company. It's an American company. But no court is going to say you can't sue Google. You can't name the Google CEO in a lawsuit because they're not, because he's not a, 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 under the jurisdiction of any European court. They do business there. They're under the jurisdiction mm. of the local courts. So... The Vatican, the, the Catholic Church does business in all of these places and theoretically should be liable as a global organization to those in those courts. But the ruling is the Catholic Church isn't an organization. It's exempt. It's a country. It's a it's religious a exempted exemption. Yeah. Which is why a religion should not have a sovereign state. People sue countries all the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. They'd well, it's like it's like something being thrown out on a technicality. It's just, uh, it's frustrating. They'd have better luck suing the Vatican City in an American court. Yeah, yeah, probably. All right, and for our final story, we've got a positive one. The top court in Brazil has overturned President Bolsonaro's law allowing evangelical Christian missionaries to have free reign of the Amazon. Oh God! And has ordered them to leave. The uncontacted tribes alone. The not so uncontacted tribes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, the ruling was that if your only goal is to convert the indigenous people of the Amazon, you have no business risking their lives with COVID. So this has been a, this is a very far reaching ruling where unless you are visiting one of these indigenous tribes to provide health care, food, or tiny tiny very narrow list of very essential services um you are not allowed to do it oh please they do that all the freaking time you went to mexico to go build a shelter that counted right so they uh it's a church but it's still a shelter don't, don't people do that all the flipping time construction is not on the list okay well okay providing food and medicine so are the only my aunt the who goes to africa to provide dental uh, you know dental hygiene to these you know poor poverty stricken areas and are converting them as she does it i mean there are that's a that's an awfully big loophole it is it is but at least it's narrowing it down to the loophole i don't know i figure if it's a no contact it's a no contact just <laughs> it really should be <laughs> all right for feedback uh starting with jimmy uh we got a couple messages from jimmy um first one was i like the podcast Mostly. I've been watching a few weeks working backwards. I'm now in December of last year. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to a new segment called Kylie's Corner, where Kylie talks about whatever she thinks is important. <laughs> right now, that would be um, fairies mm -hmm. and pirates. And witches. And how to get out of washing her hands after she goes to the bathroom. Yep. Yeah. Not sure if it's worth an entire segment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't think she, her her mic technique would be very good. Oh, of course, you'd be worried about mic technique. 
when I've gotten her on mic before, it's been really hard to actually get any usable audio. That's <laughs> true. She does. She, who the singing that she does? It's it's pretty rough, people. Yeah. Um, yeah. If she ever expresses any interest, um, I will definitely uh, not get in the way of that. Um, Jimmy also wrote, I'm down to episode 300, and I just got to say, even though I've enjoyed the show from the time she left to current, the show really has lost a lot when she left. That'd be referring to uh, Aaron. Oh, yeah, totally. She added a, a comedic and personal value to the show. I, she's my personal friend, so of course I miss hanging out with her. Mm -hmm. But life, life happens, people, and it's can be disruptive sometimes and we don't want to disrupt her life in any way so yeah. i miss her airing out the dirty laundry oh man <laughs> so funny uh, that was a patron only special i know but it was still good i just because it's i came still, up with it, the title yeah. i was still really proud for coming dusting off the degree was the other one i came up with I was yeah really proud of those and uh, airing out the dirty laundry is still available on patreon okay there you go or patrons only at a certain level too there you go hint hint jimmy <laughs> Uh, from Keith. Uh, oh, and both of the, all of these are uh, from the feedback form on the website. We got more messages on the feedback form on the 7th of October than we did in all of July, August, and September combined. There's something about Mercury being retrograde or something. Is it good <laughs> for us? Because I'll take it. All right. So from Keith, uh, I've been listening to the podcast for quite some time now. I'm based in... Uh, Lusaka, Zambia, and I have a sort of similar background to Dustin having been brought up Adventist. Mm. I particularly enjoy the episodes that deal with the history of Christianity and some of the crazy things done in his name. Over the past 50 years or so, there has been an explosion of Christian fervor in Africa, particularly the evangelical slash Pentecostal brand, replete with miracles and the prosperity gospel. Much of it really is a praying on simple minds looking for quick solutions to their poverty. Uh, not sure whether you guys have followed the mission of the late T.B. Joshua. Anyway, in keeping with this, many countries have declared themselves Christian nations, including my country, Zambia, have actually enshrined this in the Constitution. Talk about the irony of an African country identifying with the Middle Eastern religion, packaged and sold by the West. Of course, given the voting demographics, affirming Zambia as a Christian nation seems a favorite slogan for Zambian politicians, and with the uh, attendant anti-gay and lesbian posturing. I hope you can dedicate one episode to the mindless religious currents in Africa, especially those motivated by the Pentecostal slash evangelical movement. Otherwise, always a pleasure listening to the podcast. Oh, Keith. Oh, dear Keith. <laughs> what have you set off? Uh, you're not going to get one episode. It's going to be more like five. Yeah. We need to talk about a lot of this stuff. Uh, TB Joshua, I know I've heard of before. Um, sounds like he will be worth a feature all of his own. Uh, liberation theology and prosperity gospel are both things that I've been wanting to talk about for years and need to finally get to. And yeah, the craziness that is religion in Africa right now is absolutely crazy. Yep. Not surprising based on its history, as we all know now. Which I, I wanted to start off uh, with the, like, 100,000 kilometer view overview. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's going to be the 100 kilometer overview. Yeah, if you have anything else that you want to discuss, please let us know. Yes. Uh, from Janice, uh, via the contact form on the website. Um, great episode. Hi, Dustin and Lauren. I just want to tell you again how much I enjoy your show. Dustin, you are good by yourself, but I know when I hear Lauren's voice at the beginning... That it's going to be great. Oh, man. You almost missed me this week, too. But we're recording late, so. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. why the episode is sneaking. late. in. Yeah. Sne sneak me in. I was not up for it yesterday. Ugh. But, you know, I'm here. Yeah. I'm happy to be here most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Lauren, thank you so much. Thank you, Dustin. And now I'm going to go into the details for Aaron and whoever else is interested in the technical of what I did. Um, before I hit the outro, uh, and Lauren, I I'm going to pull out my crochet and yep. bid you adieu. <laughs> 
The specific reason for my changing up hosting, uh, the, the website was using uh, a very popular website hosting company, and the podcast was being, um, like the feed and uh, actual files, by one of the larger uh, podcast hosting companies. Uh, I haven't ever really been particularly happy with the web hosting company I was using. Um, they are very notorious for trying to upsell everything all the time and are run by a very large and kind of sketchy company. Um, so I, I kind of want to not do business with them. Uh, they've also had a lot of downtime recently with the database going down um, a, a lot. Uh, on the podcast hosting side, uh, I've been growing less happy with the company I've been doing that hosting with um, over the years. Why aren't you just... If this is a bad review, just leave a bad oh, review. True. Say the name. Okay, so the website hosting was with uh, Bluehost. Um, the podcast has been on Libsyn, and uh, basically their entire financial team, and I think it's cycled through twice now, have gone to prison or are wanted on charges of embezzlement. Um, I think some racketeering, too. The vice president of podcast relations used uh, the podcast movement conference to harass a representative from another company there and uh, use, let's just say, unprofessional language to talk about that company in his keynote speak, their speech, in his keynote speech. Uh, and yeah, I just kind of decided I don't want to do business with them anymore. Uh, don't really want my money going to a company with so much embezzlement going on. <laughs> that doesn't give me the warm fuzzies. Uh, I then looked at a lot of podcast hosts and had deal breakers with almost all of them. Uh, the two big ones were, I don't want my hosts messing with my file. And a lot of them rename the file, whether they actually do anything to it or not a lot of them rename it. And that bothers me. It's, I know it's kind of petty, but it, it bothers me. I want to be able to pull an extract and actually have the file name. <laughs> uh, but that's not something you can do with a surprising number of, of podcast hosting companies. And most of the rest have a lot of, they do a lot of listener tracking. And Especially with the nature of, of the Atheist Nomads, I, I highly value listener privacy. So working with those hosts was out, uh, which left me with, I'm just going to do it myself. <laughs> so that's what I have set up. Uh, I moved the, the website over to, a, uh, over to Linode, um, running on a uh, Debian 11 uh, virtual machine, and then I then using PowerPress uh, in WordPress have imported everything in from Libsyn, and I'm using uh, the Linode uh, object storage for actually hosting the media files, which is really fast. Like everything is actually performing really fast. Now, of course, this is a podcast. Most people don't notice that because your app just downloads it while you sleep. But it's fast, <laughs> and that makes me. But yeah, and, and I'm yeah, I'm I'm feeling pretty pretty damn good about this. Uh, there were some features that Libsyn had that were making it a little bit a little harder um, to make the switch because they automate some things that you know when I'm posting the episode. Right before I go to bed, the more steps I have to do, the greater the chances I make a mistake, and the longer it's going to keep me up. So uh, I have had a lot of fun writing a bash script that does basically everything. So once I export the episode out of Reaper and I export the image out of GIMP, the script just does it all. Uh, that's going to, and that now includes uh, the tagging, the encoding, the tagging, copying, converting images and renaming them and moving stuff places and uploading it to um, the object storage 
and generating the fake video with the static image for YouTube and uploading it to YouTube and it just does it all. And I am, I am really, really happy with what I've pulled off. Um, for the things I can't automate through that, I am, uh, got a couple of automations I've set up on if this, then that. And in the end, uh, publishing the podcast will be no more work. And that's great. Actually, a little bit less work. So that's great. <laughs> uh, and in the end, the hosting costs will be around half of what they were before. So that's also a win. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for now. Until next week, remember, not all those who wander are lost. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. The music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads.